eyeshadow palettes. We love to collect them, we love to collect them, and we have a hard time getting rid of them. <laughs> At least I do. And today, that is all changing. I am here to do the first of my two videos in this eyeshadow palette declutter series. I wanted to break this down into two videos just to make it a little a little more appetizing, a little easier to get through in one sitting, if you will. So what I decided to do was break it up into a more like neutral color story and then colorful color story options. Of course, there's that like blurry line in the middle. So I really, I just did my best trying to separate these into two categories. I've been talking about doing my eyeshadow palette declutter probably for a year now and it just takes a lot of time so I finally just dedicated the time to it so I hope that you find this helpful or entertaining maybe it's just a good way to know my thoughts on some palettes maybe it's good like inspiration to go through your own collection and honestly I am so glad that I did this a I found some palettes that I totally forgot that I had that I'm looking forward to using and b it was really a reminder of like what I have in my collection, what I don't need to get, and maybe what I should look for to fill in any gaps in the future. And if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real. Real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, or you wanna make sure that you're notified of my second installation in this series, then don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on those future videos. So we're going to dive into this. My goal in going into this declutter is I was really hoping to get rid of like 25% of each category. So 25% of my neutral palettes, 25% of my colorful palettes. Really, I was hoping for 30%. But I was like, you know, it's like, here's my target goal, but my ultimate goal was 30%. So you'll have to keep watching to see how I did. And don't forget to give this video a like if you love eyeshadow palettes as much as I do. All right, lovelies, it's finally happening. So here are all of my neutral-ish palettes. Uh, like I said, some of these might have a pop of color in them or some soft color, but I had to figure out a way to separate this. So I think what I'll do first is go through and just quickly pull out the ones that I know for sure I'm going to keep and then maybe grab a few that I know that I'm absolutely not keeping and then we can start the decision making. And by the way, there are 68 palettes here. Uh, not as bad as it could be, but more than I thought it would be for neutrals. Let's get into it. All right. so. These ones are not going anywhere. <laughs> These are my Pat McGrath motherships. So here I have number two. Again, I, I mean, I realize that there's green in here, but this really is all in all a neutral palette. I really do like this palette. I need to pull this one out this fall. I think it would be a good one for the fall. And yes, if you were here when I got my first mothership and I was talking about how I never keep the packaging <laughs> on palettes, I do have the packaging still. <sighs> I'm still undecided. So for now I'm keeping it, but I'm definitely keeping the palette. So I have the mothership two. Here we have Mothership, I believe this is six. Yes, this one is six. This is Midnight Sun. Again, another pretty palette. Now, this was my first Mothership palette, and I do have to say, if I if I had to, if I had to give up one, I think it would be this one, just because it's a little more basic, but very usable, but just a little more basic, but I do really like it. Okay, who still has this one? All right, I just went to change the focus on my camera so hopefully this is a little bit better but this is one that I've kind of been hemming and hawing over. This is the Eye Ecstasy Sublime palette. This was probably this one and the colorful one from this set was my very first Pat McGrath purchase. These are pretty shadows like they are very pretty. I just never reach for them and I think that it's because it's in this little like quint. There's so much packaging wasted here. I feel like what I really should do is take the shadows out of this one and the colorful one and make like a little 10 pan but I did pop this out and these are adhered in here so I'd have to like heat up the glue take them all out that just sounds like a lot of work and I'm not one to do that so I'm just not sure on these they are very pretty I think what I need to do is set this one to the side uh, yeah I think I need to just set this one to the side because I feel like most of these colors are in other palettes so at this point since I have a few of these maybe I already have it in palettes the one thing though is I could use these singles in like my BYOP but really like how much would I do that I'm not sure so I'm gonna set this one to the side all right so let's move into Natasha so I have this one that I got in BoxyCharm what were they calling this one? This one is the Peak Palette. I'm going to keep this. I think that this is such a pretty little palette. And then I did put in the Mini Retro Palette in here. I realize that this is, I mean, maybe technically a colorful eyeshadow palette, but it's so soft that I think it basically translates as kind of neutral on the eyes. Of course, I'm keeping this one. And then 
this is the one. Okay, so this is the eyeshadow palette uh, number four. This is an old school one. And you know what? I feel like, oh my gosh, you know what I feel like? These are very similar to these shadows. I mean, pretty similar. Obviously, there's the one in there that's got a little bit of a flip where this one is more of like a rusty shade. Oh my gosh, how have I not realized that? I mean, obviously, this one has more product in it. Hmm, this is the one Natasha palette that I have that I'm always like, you know what, I could probably get rid of this one. Mm, I'm gonna set this one to the side as well. We will we will have to get rid of one of these two. I don't need both of these. Okay, moving into the bigger palettes. I wasn't really sure where to put my dream. I mean, it's technically kind of colorful with the berries, but I feel like it's mostly neutral. So I just threw it in here. Of course, I'm not getting rid of this one. I did just recently get it and I've really been enjoying playing with it. Of course, I am also keeping my Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. Uh, I put this one in neutrals because I feel like most of the shades are neutral. Obviously, you have a few pops of color in here. And again, I'm sorry if my freaking camera is not focusing. I'm trying hard, guys. I am trying, but she is staying here with me. And here we have the Natasha Denona Sunset palette. This is honestly, I think when I did my ranking my Natasha Denona palettes a while ago, this one was maybe towards the bottom. It's a nice palette, but I just feel like the color story is pretty average. I feel like most of these I could get out of other palettes that I have from Natasha. This yellow is nice, but it's just not as poppy as I would have liked. I'm going to keep it for now though, because it is a nice one to pull out just for like a quick, easy, basic, warm eye look. And the shimmers in here are pretty decent. So I'm going to keep this one around. Again, like I was saying before, you know, with the Pat McGrath, if I had to pick one palette that I would let go of in my Natasha Denona collection, it would probably be this one, but I'm not going to let go of it. And then there's the Safari palette, the one that people love to hate on, but I've actually had pretty good luck with it. Yes, some of these shades in here can be a little bit touchy, but I do really like the color story of this. It's fun to work with with other shimmery shades, so she's staying in my collection. And also staying is one of the few cool toned neutral eyeshadow palettes in my collection. Of course, this is the Glam palette. She's actually pretty well used. I've used this for so many wedding parties. I really don't have that many cool tone neutral palettes in my collection, and this really is a good one, so staying as well. All right, here I've popped open all of my Too Faced <laughs> palettes. I was starting to feel like I was failing at this whole decluttering thing, and I know that I'm gonna get rid of a few of these. So the Sweet Peach palette, honestly, I used the heck out of this one. Like, I really enjoyed it, but I just don't reach for these colors very much anymore. They're all very, very muted and Too Faced shimmers, again, are just kind of like, hmm, a lot of the time. This one definitely got some good use, but uh, it's a no for me now. And so I'm gonna be getting rid of it. It also took a beating, can you see? <laughs> I traveled with this one so much that I think it just got smushed several times in my uh, travel bag. And so it's time for this one to go. So, okay, I said I was only gonna keep one of the gingerbread spice palettes. So this one up top is the gingerbread spice and the one on the bottom is the extra spicy. Sorry, I'm just trying not to blind you. Now, I think the one that I'm gonna keep is the extra spicy. And that's just because it has less purple. Like while this fun kind of like violety pink color is really pretty, there's so many like purpley tones in this one that I just I just never reach for. This one has a lot more of the warm tones, like this is so yummy. There's this fun little teal down here that I could use. So I'm gonna keep this one, but I really do need to pull it out this fall to use it to see if it's really even a quality that I would enjoy anymore. So this is the one I'm gonna keep out of those two. All right, this one has served me well through the years. It really has. This is the Too Paste, Too Paste? <laughs> the Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes. And honestly, again, this is one that's really great. I think I used to pair this a lot with my Makeup Geek shadows. I have some makeup that I'm gonna be doing for a few ladies in a couple weekends. I think I'm gonna take this one along and use it for that, see how I'm feeling about it. Obviously, it needs to be cleaned up before I do anything of the sort. But once this one is cleaned and sanitized, I can go ahead and put it in my kit and I'll see what I think. I mean, it's not a must have. 
this was a really nice one for anyone that likes a warmer color story. I just really, I haven't worked with these in a while, so I need to use the formula a little bit to see if it's worth keeping anymore. So I will do that, and she might be on the chopping block. Another one that I used quite a bit, this is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette. I really do like this palette. I'm gonna keep this one, but again, it's another one that I need to like use, but I think that fall and winter, this would be perfect to pull out and use. I can use it with a bunch of different mattes, but there are like a few little like mainstay, easy to use mattes in here. So she is gonna stay, but she needs to be brought out and used. So that one is staying. So that's not bad. Keeping two, letting two go, and one is, one is in the basket of doom, if you will. All right, I have two Anastasia right here. Can anyone guess which one is staying and which one is going? The one going is Modern Renaissance. I, <laughs> I beat this palette up, y'all. I really did enjoy this. And you know what? It is nice. But again, here, the shimmers, it's the shimmers for me that always like left me just kind of wanting more. I mean, I remember using Realgar so often. These shades are, are really nice. I mean, the Anastasia mattes, like it's just not my favorite formula, but it is a nice formula. The only thing is the shimmers in here just kind of like are so-so. And I always ended up grabbing another palette to get a little bit more pop of color. So it is time for this one to go. Can you believe I still have the brush in here? That's pretty impressive. Now it is the Prism palette that is staying with me just because this color story is a little bit more fun. Uh, I used this in a video at some point. I know I put this in, I think it was in my fall palette. My fall palette picks one year. This color story is just a bit more unique. Again, I probably could have put this in my colorful palettes, but all in all, like in general, I feel like most of this comes out fairly neutral on the eye, so that's why I shoved it in here. And I'm guessing that if you are into eyeshadow palette declutters, you'll probably watch the second video in the series, which will be my colorful palettes. Lord knows I'm probably gonna have a neutral palette in there. <laughs> and I know that I have a couple slightly colorful palettes in here. Sorry about that. But this one is staying for now. I'm going to have to, again, play with her. I've got so many of these palettes that I think would be good for fall and winter that I need to start using. All right, a couple Lorac Pro. Now, this is the original one. Um, I did have the Pro 2 as well, and that one I decluttered a while ago, mostly just because it was beat to smithereens, uh, but also because the mirror was super shattered. So I have to say, I love the Lorac shadow formula. The mattes are nice. The shimmers are very easy to use, but they aren't very shimmy. But look, I mean, what was I doing with that cream shade? Like, was I just wearing cream eyeshadow? I have no idea. But this one, I'm... I'm tempted to keep it, but I'm just gonna let it go. Maybe there's someone who likes a little neutral eyeshadow moment and will enjoy this and hopefully doesn't need a pan of cream since that one's almost all gone. But uh, this one, it served me well. It's just it's just not something I need anymore. Now, this one I got, um, I think I actually took this from a friend. She wasn't using it and I was like, oh, I will totally use this because this has the shade Rosé from the Lorac Pro 2 palette. And it also, of course, has this buff and a black shade. Sorry, everybody, the autofocus is just killing me today. I'm gonna try to do a little better here, but uh, this rosé shade, I loved. I haven't even used this palette at all, and I, I just need to pass it along to someone. Like, I think this could be a really great little quick neutral eye moment. I loved that rosé shade so, so much, but Lord knows I have probably 10 other shades in my singles that are very similar to it, and I obviously haven't touched it at all, so it's time to let it go. All right, I have two Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, let's see, this is the Dazzling Diamonds palette of pops. I got this free in, you know, it was like a gift with purchase thing and I'm gonna let it go. I think, did I even use it? If I did, I think I maybe used it in one video. You know, I love Charlotte Tilbury complexion products. These are nice eyeshadows. It's just not something I've ever reached for. I probably had this Ooh, for at least a year, but maybe even two. Maybe it would be two this holiday. I'm honestly not even sure, and I'm just not using it, so I'm gonna let it go. Uh, I love the packaging on this. So, this one. This is the Fire Rose Quad. So, earlier today, I was like, okay, I'm keeping Fire Rose, <laughs> because I was literally in the shower after pulling out all these palettes and getting them separated. I was like, thinking about, ooh, okay, which am I gonna keep? Which am I gonna throw out? This one at first I was like, keep, and then I was like, no, just, well, not throw it out, obviously, like give it to someone, sell it, whatever. I was like, ooh, I don't know. But then I swatched it and I was like, yeah, these are really pretty. Like, 
I, I think even in the video that I did on this quad, I was like, I've never bought Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow before. It's never really like called to me. This is a color story though that I can really get behind and I love the packaging on it. So I'm gonna keep this one for now. The thing for me is because there is only one matte in here, I'm just not a quad girl, y'all. I am just not a quad girl. So I know that to get more use out of this, I just need to pull out another palette that has other shades that I would use in conjunction with this. So that's what I need to do. I need to pull her out and use her. If I find that she isn't giving me the joy that I'm looking for, I will end up passing it along, selling it on Mercari, doing something. I know that there were people that missed out on this one. So if it's not bringing me joy, I should probably give someone else that opportunity. All right, really quickly, just a couple little palettes that I got in BoxyCharm. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I stopped getting BoxyCharm because I was getting all sorts of little palettes that I was never using. So this is the Butter London one. This is some, I mean, honestly, this looks like as generic as can be. This is Studio Makeup. So these are going, hopefully they will find a good little home. This Butter London one was actually okay. It's just not something that I need. It was just taking up space. All right, sorry, you might hear some background noise, but I decided to open up the, uh, the windows. It's just too nice out. All right, three little palettes and only one I am keeping. I'm going to get rid of the e.l.f. Bite Size Palette in Rosewater. This is a pretty palette. I actually really liked it when I did, I think it was maybe like an all drugstore look, but I just don't reach for quads. Whether it's Charlotte Tilbury or it's e.l.f., I just don't reach for it if it's a quad. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. Uh, this Ofra one, this was a lot of fun to work with. This was the Empowered Palette. I love the color story of this. I know that this technically should probably be in with colorful palettes, but since it's kind of this grungier color story, I just I just put it in here. Just forgive me, but this one's going anyway. It just it just didn't live up to my hopes and dreams. I really like this kind of like grungy, pukey green. I have this in other palettes and it performs better though, so I'm just gonna be getting rid of this one. Now this one is definitely a neutral <laughs> and it's definitely a keeper. This is the Sigma Rendezvous palette. This is what has made me want to get a Sigma eyeshadow palette. I still have not gotten a full-size Sigma eyeshadow palette since getting this. I love the quality of this though, so I keep waiting. I keep waiting for a color story that calls my name. I just haven't seen it yet, but the Rendezvous palette is going to stay. I mean, come on, the packaging is rose gold. You've got rose golds inside. This is a Kelly palette for sure, so she's a keeper. All right, let's grab some oldies and some not so goodies. So this is the Urban Decay Original Naked palette. I am just getting rid of this. It's it's honestly fairly untouched. I think I can probably find someone who would like this. I have just always been underwhelmed by Urban Decay eyeshadows. I don't know why I, I've gotten a couple different palettes from them and I'm always like, why? Why? So I'm getting rid of this one. Hopefully I can find someone that would like it. I'm also getting rid of this one. This is the Urban Decay, what the heck did they call this? Okay, I can't even see what palette this is, but it's like this little like bite size honey something something palette. <laughs> Uh, underwhelming. I think I've talked about this before in a video where I got the eyeliner, the eyeshadow primer, this and something else. And at this point, I think I will have decluttered everything but the one eyeliner. So she's going away too. Oh, one more skinny that I'm keeping. This is Baked Browns from Dose of Colors. I really like this eyeshadow palette. I really like the formula of these mattes. It's a great one to pull out to pair with singles. Definitely a keeper. All right, a couple rosy toned palettes. We have the Desert Lights from, of course, Flower Beauty. And then the baby one from uh, Lawless. This one I got in a Poshmark mystery bag thing. I did use it in a video, and honestly, I think I've only used it once since then. Uh, it's just, it's just not enough. It's just not giving me enough. It was nice quality, but I just, I just need more. I just need more, and I think that somebody could really get good use out of this. I really, again, I think I only used it once or twice, so that one's gonna go. The Desert Lights, though, ooh. If you haven't tried this formula from Flower Beauty, it is really nice. The one thing that I know is a lot of people say that their palettes have come busted in shipping, but I'm wondering, I think Flower Beauty is at CVS, so maybe you could find it there. If it's in stock, I'm not sure, but this is such a wonderful palette. If you are into rosy tones, rose gold tones like me, I highly recommend this palette. I mean, just such pretty colors. I think I do have a video using this palette. It's like a all Flower Beauty one maybe, but I will make sure to link that if I do have it. All right, two quads that were very disappointing to me. I spoke on and on about them in the videos in which I used them, the Tom Ford Soleil et Lune and the Rowan 1111 palette. I am going to be glad to get these out. I've literally just been hanging on to them for this video, which is ridiculous. Maybe somebody else can get some use out of them. I just wasn't impressed with either. All right, y'all, we're doing pretty good. I've gotten rid of quite a few, so I thought I'd very quickly show you three that I'm definitely keeping. Tiny Marvels, of course, 
who would ever get rid of this beautiful gem? Not only because we all love and miss Mel so much, and this has been such a beautiful remembrance of her, but this really is a beautiful palette and stands on its own. Again, this is one that I maybe could have put in colorful, but I feel like it's it's a softer colorful. So here she is. Then I also have the Coffee Talk and California Coast palettes. I did just recently get these. Uh, Coffee Talk is another, you know, somewhat cool neutral palette. I, I did compare it to shades in um, the Natasha Denona Glam though, and I think that these really hold their own. So not really too much overlap to not make it worth it, and it is such a cute little palette. And then California Coast. Of course, this one's like slightly more rosy and taupey. Love them both. Definitely really enjoyed using this palette as well. So these are all keepers in my book. I mean, Sydney Grace makes it really hard to declutter anything. I think that it's such high quality. The only reason I could ever see decluttering a Sydney Grace product is if the color story just wasn't speaking to me anymore. Oh, here is one more cool toned palette that I'm going to get rid of. In all honesty, this was already um, a secondhand palette. One of my friends gave this to me. Ugh. Can we just talk? Now, I know this was a collab with Gwen Stefani, and Gwen is, you know, not exactly the most tan of complexions, but, like, did did we need all of this? Could we have maybe had three shades? Three shades that sort of gave us this vibe. It's a little uninspired. I don't even know. I, I think I just wanted to try it. I love the packaging more than the palette itself, and it's just time to get rid of it. Another BoxyCharm procurement, I'm pretty sure. This is the Tardis Pro. Again, not something that I need, not something that I think I used it once, maybe twice. I, I know someone else could get better use out of this for sure. Oh my gosh, a blast from the past. A blast from my past, but maybe if you've been here in the makeup world for a while, you will remember this In the Light palette from Stila. Oh, look, this is, this is from when Kelly had like 10 eyeshadow palettes. So again, you can see I really, I really use this palette, but at this point, it, it needs to go. The mirror is broken. The mirror is broken. Things are busted. It, it's just time to go. But I really did love this palette. Again, now I think that there are just so many amazing formulas that this probably wouldn't hold up anymore, but I did really love it when I was using it a lot. All right, here is a palette I'm keeping. This is the Stroke of Midnight palette from Makeup Geek. I'm just wondering though if I should like take these shadows out and just use them as singles. Just wondering if I would get more use of them, but I don't know, like sometimes having these little palettes actually make you use them more because they don't get lost in the shuffle of singles. This is another palette that actually made it into one of my like fall palette picks videos and it's a beautiful color story. So you can see why. So she's gonna stay in my collection, but I think for now I will keep it whole. I just loved this Art Deco vibe that Makeup Geek had as well. Okay, two luxury eye palettes from Wayne Goss. We have the Pearl palette and the Imperial Topaz palette. This was Wayne's original and I just can't see ever getting rid of it. It was just so special to me at the time. The Pearl palette is really nice. I don't reach for it as much, but it is a good one to have for bridal looks, you know, for something soft and easy, so I'm keeping both. Okay, this Lime Crime Venus XL2 palette. This is technically you know, a colorful palette, but this palette is so muted that I just feel like it belongs in the neutrals. Honestly, I like this palette, but it is a little hard to get the shimmers to pick up sometimes, and I just don't find myself reaching for it. The last couple times I used it, I just felt like a little underwhelmed. I do have to say though, this color story, when I saw the leak of the supposed upcoming Natasha Denona palette, it totally gave me the vibes of this. So that probably means also that if that palette comes out, I don't need to use it because I haven't even been grabbing for this one. We'll see. The two palettes from the nude mandala collection from Glam Shop. This one is all matte shades. I was so excited to get these and I almost never reach for them. There's just something a little bit weird about this color story. Like it's different, but I don't know like so that's anyway that's the matte palette this is the shimmer palette <sighs> I I just never reach for these it looks like I've used them a lot but I think that's just from doing a swatch video again I think what I'm gonna do so for sure I'm gonna get rid of this palette because I just never reach for it and every time I actually try to I'm just like I'm just not sure what I'm gonna do with this so I think I'm gonna get rid of this one but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out. I just can't believe, I just can't see myself ever getting rid of Glam Shop shimmers. I mean, they're so pretty. Like, look at that. Ooh, that is so pretty. Let's grab this like coppery one. I mean, look, they're so, so pretty. I just need to use them more. So I'm gonna definitely pull this out in my fall shop my stash because I think it would be a good one for fall and winter. And if I'm not grabbing for it enough, maybe it'll come up in a chopping block episode, but I think she just needs to be used, loved and appreciated. So we're gonna give it a go. 
Okay, two Juvia's Place palettes. We have the Saharan by Juvia's. I think this went into one of my palette picks. It's There are shades in here that just really call to me. Like this sort of like almost like antique greeny gold is beautiful. This Sokoto shade, I've used that before and really enjoyed it. Uh, this Kia, Kaya shade is gorgeous as well. That's like a smoky, ooh, beautiful teal. Love it. I just don't reach for this though. I think someone could get more use out of this. I like Juvia's Place. I just I just don't ever seem to reach for them very much. So I'm going to pass this one along. I'm just not getting any use out of her. This one, however, this Warrior II palette, I love, I love the color of this. From the looks of it, it looks like I haven't even used this. I know that I have, but it just, it looks virtually untouched. I need to use this more. This is definitely a Fall Vibes palette. I think she's gonna go into my shop, my stash. We'll see. By the way, that video is probably up already by the time this one is coming up. I'm doing a live. So if you wanna check that one out, you can see what else I pulled out for my shop, my stash. But this one is gonna go into it, I'm pretty sure. All right, a little matte palette that I'm not gonna be keeping. This is the Jason Wu what it is palette. So this I used on my channel when I did like a brand review when they first launched and I was somewhat underwhelmed. Like it's okay, it's okay, it's just not, it's not great. And at this point I just need things that I think that are great in my collection. Obviously I've had over 60 palettes, that's ridiculous. So the ones that are just okay can't stay. Ooh, the ones that are just okay can't stay. All right, a couple that are not just okay that are staying. Of course, you have to know that the Coffee Cat palette is staying. The only thing that this one has against it is the cheap packaging. This one's starting to break. This little palette is so nice. It's so good to me. I really love it. So I'm gonna be keeping that one. The other Wet n Wild that I'm gonna be keeping is this, let's see, what is it called? Go Commando. So this is this beautiful fall rusty color story. I really like this one. I found that it worked really easily on the eyes and it's a keeper. Okay, can we talk old school? So this is the O g comfort zone palette like we're talking oh my gosh we're talking early early youtube and i bought the updated version of it just to see how the formulas compared i did a video on that a long time ago in the dark basement days uh i'm just gonna let go of both of these i just don't reach for them they're decent quality this one honestly just needs to like get thrown out at this point it's like almost as old as i am <laughs> This one though, I, you know, if somebody likes the color story, it definitely worked well. It's just, again, the packaging, like I wish, okay, here's the thing. If I could get a little bit more amped up packaging from Wet n Wild, like even if they had like a little spin-off brand where the packaging was just a little nicer, it would just be nice because it just wouldn't be so flimsy and break so easily, but these ones are gonna go. All right, here's a palette that I got from my friend Aileen. She had tried this out and it wasn't really her jam, so she passed it along to me. And I can kind of understand why it wasn't her jam because these shimmers are a little bit sparkly and Aileen is not all about the sparkle. The shimmers aren't what excites me about this palette though. The mattes are so, so nice. So I'm going to keep it for that. If I find that I'm not reaching for them very often though, I might end up passing this along at some point, but I have been enjoying it. I just need to enjoy it more. So she's gonna stay for now. Ta-da, one more BoxyCharm palette. This one actually, I was so intrigued by. I think I used it once, or did I just swatch it? Uh, I think I used it, I think I used it. This is the Dido Venus palette. It was very pretty. I mean, this packaging is kind of fun. I think this would annoy a lot of people, but I thought it was kind of fun. I'm just not reaching for it, and all of these colors I have in my collection, so I'm gonna pass it along. All right, a couple palettes from Viseart. This is the neutral matte palette. And then we have the Soleil La Plage. Now you can see here that the Soleil La Plage does have some colors to it. They're just a little softer though. So I kept it in the neutrals. This bird, this bird has trying, <laughs> this bird has been trying to upstage me for like 10 minutes now. I just gotta keep going. <laughs> Anyway, I did do a video um, with my purchases that I got from the Viseart sale. If you do want to see that, I'll have it linked. I did feature this one, so if you do want to check that out, but it looks basically like what is on the cover here. I don't know why I'm keeping this palette cover. I should probably just get rid of it, but they're both staying in my collection. Another one that is, of course, staying in my collection is the Blend Bunny, the Dollhouse palette. Again, this one kind of colorful, but kind of neutral. I wasn't sure where to put it, but I put it here. It is obviously the softest in color from the Blend Bunny lineup. I do have all of the Blend Bunny palettes so far, and I've really enjoyed the quality. 
the mattes are where it's at for me with Blend Bunny. The shimmers are okay. Uh, I definitely feel like they did upgrade the formula. These are nice. It's just not something that I'm like, gosh, you know what I want to use today are those Blend Bunny shimmers. But the mattes are so beautiful. I definitely really appreciate this. I'd like to see some smaller palettes from them. You know, it's a Goldilocks moment. Like this one, it's a nice sized palette, but I could see like a half and then having like 10, 12 pans. That's what I'd like to see. But anyway, this one is staying in my collection. All right, another one that I actually did get from BoxyCharm, but I am keeping. I love this palette. This is the All of You Forever palette. I've talked about this one. I've given it in giveaways. I really enjoy this one. You know, it's neutral with pops of green, delicious. I really like the Violet Voss formula, so this one is staying. Another Violet Voss palette that I am going to keep, but I need to use more is the Holy Grail. Nope, it's the, yes, it is the Holy Grail palette. Wow. Uh, this one is just a beautiful mix of neutrals, rosy neutrals. You have a couple warm pops in there. So beautiful. I just forget about this one. It's too big to stand in my drawer, and so it just ends up getting laid flat and then getting lost, which is why I want to get like a little cubby to, or like a table or something to have things stand up on. So this one needs to get more love because I do really like the Violet Voss formula. You all know I'm keeping this one. This is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2. She's beautiful. She's shimmery. She's rosy. She's got some creaminess to her. It's my dream palette. I do really like this one. I've had a lot of fun with this. This is one that I'll probably pull out this fall for sure. So it's a definite keeper. All right. The rest of these are ColourPop. So let's dive in. I'm really struggling on one or two of these. Ugh. Okay, let's just get started. So going coconuts, this is the other uh, palette in my collection other than Natasha Denona Glam that I think definitely lives within that, you know, cool neutral story. I will say that I feel like between California Coast and Glam, I probably have most of these, California Coast being from uh, Sydney Grace, of course. What I need to do is use this because I know for sure that the shades that are in my Sydney Grace palettes are going to be higher quality than this, but I just need to pull this one out to see if I'm still in love with the shades. Honestly, it was like these two shimmers here that I really loved. I know that I probably have shades like that in my collection in singles or something, or maybe even already in palettes. I just need to play with this one a little bit more, but she's going to stay for now. If nothing else, this is one that would really be easy for some bridal looks. Okay. Here is one that I'm hemming and hawing on. Ugh, the Bird of Paradise palette. It's so pretty. It really is so pretty. The thing is, is I have these shades 10 times over in my collection now. Like I really feel like I do. I cannot remember the last time I pulled this palette to use. The thing is, is it's almost too monochromatic for me. This was, I think one, you know, when ColourPop was doing like 50 monochromatic ones, this was one of those. And I just feel like it's a little too monochromatic for me. I think I'm gonna get rid of it. Ooh, I think I'm gonna get rid of it. I did do a video with this like way back in the day and I loved it. I really did love this palette, but it's just time to let it go. I really haven't grabbed for it in at least a year, so it's definitely time to say goodbye. All right, this is a palette that you would have to pry out of my hands. <laughs> this is the California Love palette. I love this one. I mean, look at that beautiful neutral warm story. This is a Kelly story for sure. Yes, it has pressed glitter. It's freaking amazing though. I've worn it before and I really do love it. So staying with me. This palette was quite literally the most underwhelming ColourPop purchase I've ever made. And I've made a lot of ColourPop purchases. I have to say, I don't remember the last one that I made. Oh, it was probably Hocus Pocus, the original one in like a restock at some point. I won't be buying ColourPop anymore for lots of different reasons, but I'm still going to use what I have because I bought it. I spent my money. I'm going to enjoy what I have, but this was one that I just, I never enjoyed. Look at this. It's like, it just like a third of these shades could have been like left out and replaced with something with a little bit more depth, something like that. I, I ugh, it's boring. I'm going to get rid of it finally. Maybe for someone who's super pale or really likes more, I mean, kind of washed out looks, maybe that would be for them, but it's not for me. Mulan was definitely one of my favorite Disney movies at the moment. I really loved it. I love this color story. I am going to keep this. I think it's a great like neutral, warm, kind of great for like the holidays sort of vibe. So I'm going to keep this one. Um, I haven't used it in a while, so maybe I'll have to pull it out. This to me is definitely, like I said, one to use more like November, December. It just gives me those holiday vibes, but she needs to be used this year. Okay, this palette. I think that this was my very first ColourPop palette purchase. I had purchased Super Shocks before this, but 
I've told you before that I used to just really be super fangirling over Kathleen Lights. And when she brought this color story out, I was like, um, let's see, it's rose gold. The packaging is rose gold. And the color story inside is totally me. It's rose gold. You have some beautiful champagnes. You have these nice like tangerine-y sort of like corally moments. And then you had some teals, which at the time I was really into. This palette is so old at this point. It's so old at this point. I. I do not use this palette anymore. I mean, I don't even know. Would the shadows still be good? Maybe, yeah. They actually seem pretty good still. This was the one shade that I like almost never use, but these ones still look okay. The thing is, is like, I just don't, I just don't grab it. It went on vacations with me and everything. I purely have it for nostalgia reasons. I just can't decide if I, if I still need it for that. Like, what am I doing here? <laughs> do I need a palette for nostalgia? Probably not. <sighs> help me out. Tell me, tell me, is it silly to keep something just for nostalgia? Do you do that? Do you keep palettes knowing that you're not going to use them, but just knowing that they had good memories? Like it's a keepsake at this point, but do I need room for keepsakes in my makeup? Probably not. I'm so undecided on this one. You'll have to chime, <laughs> chime in down below. If you made it to the end of this video, please chime in down below. Tell me, toss it or treasure it. I'd love to know your thoughts, but for now, I guess I'm gonna keep it one last time. We'll see what everybody has to say. Maybe you can all convince me that I should just get rid of it. All right, so we are down to these last two. These are all of the palettes that I'm getting rid of. Sorry, there's some that's not even in frame right now, but that's all of them. There are uh, 26 there, and then I'm, if I'm getting rid of one of these, it will be 27. Okay, I think what we need to do is do a little swatch party here. Hold on. Okay, so here are these swatches of the Pat McGrath. I do have to say this palette holds a little bit of a special place in my heart because <laughs> Jeremy used it in the uh, boyfriend slash fiance does my makeup tag that we did. Mm, let me swatch it next to the Natasha Denona. Ugh, okay. So this one is the Natasha Denona. Sorry, I totally like swatched that last one over <laughs> for the second to last one. So that last set there, starting at the very like light pearly one is the Natasha Denona, uh, what is this one called? What did I say it was? Like palette number four? Yeah, I think so. And then this one is the Pat McGrath. Gosh, darn it. This is a really hard decision. Okay, I'm really, I'm really struggling. So I think what I need to do is I need to use both of these. So I'm gonna do that this week. I'm gonna use both of these, try to use them in a look and then I'll decide. I also did just put a poll on Instagram, <laughs> which it will already have passed by the time you see this, but I needed to poll the audience. So I did that between that and me using the two of these. I will decide which one of these I'm gonna keep because I really don't need both. Honestly, I feel like the color story in this one is more unique. They both have a decent formula. I feel like they both have one shade that I'm kind of like meh about. And funny enough, it's like the dark one in both of them. Like this one has like glitter and this one just doesn't really give me much at all. But the packaging on this is much sturdier. Obviously this is super flimsy, but I could pop these out for single shadows. I don't know. This is why I'm having this issue. But I do know that one of these is gonna be going. I will notate it here somewhere on the screen for you at this point so that you will know. But what that means is, since I'm getting rid of one of these, we will have a total of 27 of my 68 palettes being decluttered, which means that I have gotten rid of 39.7% of my neutral eyeshadow palettes. That is pretty awesome. My goal was gonna be, I don't know if I said it at the beginning of this, but my goal was 25, but I was hoping that I would get to 30 and to get to basically 40% is awesome. It almost makes me wanna pick one more just so I could say I was getting rid of 40%. But I do have a couple on the chopping block in here. We have this Nude Mandala Shimmer Palette. So that one is kind of like on the chopping block. We also have the Just Peachy Mattes that's on the chopping block. I feel like there was something else. What the heck was it? I don't even remember. But that means that there are a couple more that hopefully I will make a decision and declutter one more Which would essentially make it 40% which would be amazing. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this one uh, Make sure you are subscribed if you do want to see the second video the colorful portion of this declutter I'm gonna film it right now once I get up stretch stretch my hips out a little bit I am 41 and getting too old to be sitting on the floor for multiple hours <laughs> Thanks lovelies. I'll see you really soon